Hello and welcome to this video. What we will do is learn about constructor functions and getters and setters by building a bank account system. So let's go ahead and start. To do this, I'll start by creating a structure and I'll call the structure bank account like this. Okay. Now this bank account will have multiple data members. Let's go ahead and see. Usually a bank account should have an ID. So int ID, this ID will be generated randomly. Also a bank account should have an owner. So account owner name right now also a bank account should have a balance so i'll say double balance this will be the balance of the owner now these are the data members or the variables that this structure will work with let's start with the constructor what is a constructor so let me write it correctly like this so a constructor is a simple function that doesn't have a return type and has the same name of the structure and it is called automatically as soon as you create an object let's go ahead and see first of all no return type Next should have the same name as the structure, for example, bank account, and this is the constructor function. Now it is also called automatically as soon as you create an object. Let us see. I would say see out, and I'll call it called automatically, like this, okay? Now let me go down here and create an object. So I'll say bank account, and I'll call this variable my account. So what I did is I created a variable of type account, or even I created an object. So this one is an object. So let's go ahead and run this code and see if the function will be called automatically okay so i'll run as you can see called automatically as you can see right here we created an object and because you created an object a constructor by default will be called automatically as soon as you create an object so this here is a constructor but what do we use constructor for well usually constructors are used to initialize data members these variables right here usually we could pass to the constructor some parameters because in the end it is a function so I'll go ahead and say string account owner name, for example, or account owner like this, AC name, for example. And next, let's say double account balance. So what I'm doing here is I'm passing parameters, okay? And what I could do with these parameters is assign them to the data members. But before, let's go ahead down here and see what was, what's happening. As you can see now, because our constructor receives parameters, we should pass them when we create our object. Simply after the variable, add those double parentheses right here and inside of them, give the specific uh, arguments for these parameters. So account name, let's say John Smith, like this, okay? So this is the owner, let's say account balance, $150. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all say account owner name, this is the data member, and I'll assign the parameter or the value given by this parameter. I'm assigning it to the data member. I'll do the same thing for balance. I'll say balance equal to account balance, like this. So I receive these inputs from the constructor or from the object right here, and this constructor will receive them and assign them to the variables. So what's happening here, we are initializing the variables. Now what we'll do with the ID? So you notice I didn't pass an ID here because the ID will be generated randomly by the system. So I'll say something like ID like this, and I want to generate a random number. How do we do this? Well, we could use these two functions, rand and srand. Let's go ahead and see them. Of course, if you want to go ahead and check out how to generate random numbers, make sure to check out this video. But either way, it's very simple. We need to include a couple of libraries like C standard lib. This is the first library. And the second one is C time. Okay. Now down here in the main, we should create an, a seed value. This is very important. Okay. Now after this, I'll go up here. And if I want to create a random number from, for example, 100 to 999, for example, what I will do is I'll say this. I'll use rand like this and say mod 900. This will create a random number from 0 to 899. But what I will do next is I'll add it with 100. So 100 plus whatever is here. So let's say we got 899. This will give us 999, right? So if we get, for example, here 0, this will give us 100 because 0 plus 100 is 100. So what we did here is we generated random number for the ID. But also a constructor is used to validate data members. Right here in the balance, what if the user gave, for example, minus 1? This is wrong or 0. What I could do here is use an if statement. I could say if account balance less than or equal to 0, what I want to do is I want to set a default balance of $5, all 
okay because minus one or zero is not really a good balance right of course otherwise if everything is correct if the account or if the parameter given by the user right here is correct like 150 for example then what i will do is simply assign to the data member balance the account balance or the input given by the user okay so this is your constructor function now that we know about constructor let's go ahead and learn about getters and setters so what's a getter function a getter function is simply a function that returns something to you it returns a specific data member so let's say i want to create a getter function that returns the id i'll say something like int get id like this and simply say return id this right here is a getter function because it gets the id of the user or of, of the object and it returns it this is a getter function how about we do another one i'll say string like this get account name or ac name like this okay so what i'll do here is i'll return the account owner name so this is a getter function because it returns something it returns the account owner name now again let's do it for the balance so double get balance like this and i'll say return like this return balance right here i'm returning the balance so this is a getter function let's go ahead and try them i'm going down here i'm going to say see out my account dot and let's say get id for example let's try one of these functions okay so i'm going to go here compile and then launch as you can see this is the id 512 so this function works let's go ahead and try one more function for example the balance for example so get balance like this as you can see the balance is 150 so basically this 150 is right here it was passed to the constructor this is the parameter and what happened is that 150 is definitely not less than or equal to zero so this condition will work and we will assign 150 to balance or for the to the data member of the object okay now that's good let's go ahead and go to setters now what's a setter method or a function a setter function simply modifies a certain data member let's go ahead and try to modify the account username so i'm going down here and i'm going to say void set account name like this now because we are we need to assign a new value so we need to take a new value or accept a new value so i'm going to say string new name and what i'm going to do is simply say account owner name equal to new name so what i'm doing here is i'm using a setter function which is used to modify a certain data member or piece of data right here i am modifying the account owner name to a new name given by the user let's go ahead and try this let me print a before and after get account name like this now i'm going to use my account dot set account name let's say david smith for example and let me go ahead copy this and print it right here and let me copy print okay paste excuse me so i'm going to com compile my file and then let's launch it as you can see john smith and then it became david smith after we called the set function okay so this is a setter and a getter function now let's continue with our bank account structure usually with a bank account you can deposit a value or a certain amount so i'll say deposit like this and i'll say int new or excuse me amount like this now in order to deposit an amount it should be a valid amount so i'll say if amount less than or equal to zero i'm checking if it is a valid amount if it's not i'll say failed to deposit like this and l otherwise if it is a valid amount i'll simply deposit the amount by simply saying balance plus equal to amount because you're adding a new balance or excuse me you're adding an amount to your balance now how about we need to withdraw a certain amount so i'll say void withdraw and it is the same thing as withdrawal like this and it is the same thing as deposit but instead of plus we'll use minus so i'll say amount like this and right here i will say if amount is valid okay i'm checking if it is valid like this what i will do is print a message like failed to withdraw like this okay after this what i'm going to do is simply say amount or excuse me balance minus equal to amount because you are taking off a certain amount from the balance okay and so this is our bank account structure this is complete let's go ahead and try it okay so right here after this one we change the name of the user how about we go ahead and print again the for example the id so get id of the user like this and now let's try to deposit so i'll say my account dot deposit let's say i'm going to deposit 120 dollars i'll go ahead and say my account dot get balance like this just to see how much we have 
And now let me go ahead and for example withdraw for example $90 for example okay and let's go ahead and say see out again my account dot get balance get balance like this and let's go ahead and try this out so compile and launch as you can see it's John Smith changed to David Smith this is the ID 350 okay and this is the dollars okay so 270 150 so it was first of all 150 we deposited 120 it became 270 and then we took off 90 from 270 it became 180 dollars and so this is your bank account system or structure all right this is it for this video if you found it helpful make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date for the next video and i hope to see you in the next one